I am literally hating the way my hair looks today, but we are going to roll with it. <laughs> Hey guys, it's your girl Scarlett Uzumaki, your friendly neighbourhood otaku back with another video. This video is a little bit of a story time revolving around my experience as growing up as an otaku, which is very exciting because I get to talk about my favourite thing, which is me. <laughs> so let's get on with the video. So to start with, like a lot of people who grew up in the UK, my introduction to anime was through shows like Pokemon, Digimon and um, card captures. So a lot of these shows were dubbed by 4Kids, which is the studio responsible for bringing you Saturday morning television like Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles and X-Men the Animation Series. So these shows were aimed for children and they were very notorious for censoring like, any violence. If you had guns, they were lasers, if you had rice balls, they were jelly donuts, and if you had signs, the writing was taken off because kids can't read, they can't handle words, because then they will think and get ideas, and then the whole society will collapse. <laughs> you know, I'll use my trusty frying pan as a drying pan. I started re-watching a lot of the shows that four kids had dubbed but in their original language so I started watching Sonic X in Japanese, One Piece in Japanese um, and Car Captures in Japanese because four kids had basically ruined it for me and re-watching it on my own in the original dub I realised how amazing anime was and it stuck with me since, since then but a lot of my friends didn't feel the same they thought they had outgrown anime and didn't want to rewatch it because they thought it was for children and so they would make fun of me for watching it. As I aged, I outgrew those friends um, because friends shouldn't make fun of you for what you watch. They should, you know, they should support you, they should, you know, be your friend. Not make fun of you because you don't watch the same things as them. And so as I made new friends, as I went through high school, I met people who also watch anime. So other kids who also watched things like Naruto and who watched Bleach, who watched Dragon Ball Z. I had found my tribe. I felt like I had to hide um, a part of myself growing up as an otaku because um, I didn't want to be judged by other people because so as a black girl, there's this unspoken notion that you can only dress like a certain, you can only dress a certain way, you can only listen to certain music, you can only like certain things. And I liked those things, but that wasn't all I liked. I liked other things too, so I felt conflicted. I didn't feel like I fit fully within black culture, but also I didn't fit fully anywhere else. So I felt lost. I was a little drifter. To end this video, I just want to say that I am very grateful that I grew up as a black otaku because it allowed me to see both sides, so the otaku side and the black side of life. I mean, it sounds weird, but when you grow up as a black person, you're exposed to a whole new world. So you're exposed to different types of music, different types of food, different types of clothing, and then when you are an otaku you're exposed to another whole set of ideals and melding them together it just creates a whole new mesh of experiences that I'm so grateful I was able to have. I love being able to bring my blackness to um, the otaku world in general so for instance um, when I cosplay I tend to cosplay characters using my braids so I'll braid my hair different colour and that is my wig <laughs> So I'm bringing my black culture, so my hair, to my cosplay and I'm so grateful I can do that. So if you liked this video, leave a big thumbs up and comment down below if you want to see more story time videos. So leave a comment of what you want to see from me for story times because I love talking about myself as you could probably tell. <laughs> so bye for now and see you in my next one and have a lovely day. And who will do? <laughs> <laughs> I just said to